Hi guys, welcome to my channel. My name is CKT Chaotic. Today I will be reading I'm the Queen in This Life, episode 11 to 12. The story's getting pretty good, so let's go ahead and get started. Cesare de Como, the most eligible bachelor in all of San Carlo. Whether it was precious gems, the finest stallions, or the fairest debutantes in the land, they were all firmly within Cesare's grasp. Above all, he was a scion of the king and his most cherished mistress, Countess Rubina. In other words, he was revered and admired by all of Etruscan. None other than the most sought-after woman in San Carlo <laughs> could ever hope to be my wife. I ought to press Cardinal de Mer on the matter of my marriage proposal soon. I'll raise the notion with my father as well when I see him next month. <laughs> oh. 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 Oh, father. Ugh. So he's like a bratty brother. Tragically. The illegitimate son, Cesare, Cesare could only be treated like his father's son. <laughs> In private chambers, away from prying eyes. Ugh. That naive little princeling. Hmm. Mother, are you acquainted at all with the brunette who's been hanging over the de Mare family like a dreary cloud of late? <sighs> and so she's a cardinal's second daughter from another mistress. It seems she has impressed the queen already. Oh, for what merit, may I ask? Don't be so hasty to judge a book by its cover. The girl has already won Her Majesty's favor in spite of her youth and inexperience. There may well be more to her than meets the eye. <laughs> be that it as it may, what use is a book without its cover? <laughs> Are you so naive as to think that I, your mother, rose to prominence through my appearance alone? Well, did you not? You brash little rake. Ah, it seems the sermon's about to begin. So, that would be... The famed apostle of Aceretto. I'm the queen in this life. Episode 11. <sighs> The Apostle of Aceredo, a clergyman with a favorite, fervent following among the poor and down, tr down, tr not downtrodden, the poor and downtrodden, trodden? What word is that? Downtrodden. It means oppressed or treated badly by people in power. Oppressed or treated badly by people in power. Oh, he's a, he's a crap. <laughs> More words to my vocabulary. Unlike the traditional interpretation of the Holy Scriptures, which contends that those who sinned in their previous life are reborn as lowly peasants in the next, the Apostle taught the people that even the lowliest of peons could learn and practice the sacred teachings of God to one day reach the salvation as a faithful children of our Lord. In other words, he claimed that the, even the peasants could elevate themselves in the eyes of the Most High. Indeed, our Lord himself. 
was born the child of man. <gasps> born the son of a humble shepherd in a shed just like any other in Jisharje. Until he answered the Lord's calling and became his son. He lived, laughed, and learned as a man. It was only when our Lord God chose him to serve as his son through the first sacrifice. Is he questioning the good book? Someone ought to stop, put a stop to this bl blasphemy. That he was elevated from his human body, that of a holy son, attaining divinite, divinity on a par with our holy God. He, he's... A heretic. A heretic means is someone whose belief or action are considered wrong by most people because they disagree with the beliefs that are general, generally accepted. Accepted. Accepted? Accepted. Hello, English? I think my brain just died. <laughs> heretic. He means to undermine our nation's very foundation. How could I allow a heretic to deliver his foul sermons in my mass? Allowing him to spread his filth could result in my own persecution as a heretic. The only thing is, the apostle of Acerto was personally invited by the Pope himself. Interfering with his sermons would be a direct insult to his holiness. What am I to do? In conclusion, Gon of Jersarche was a child of a man just like you and I. Have you no shame? Huh? 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 <gasps> Who are you to deny the teachings of the Holy Scriptures? The Holy Book teaches us that the God of Drisarche bade us to spread the good word to all peoples under God's refirmament and bless them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Precisely, our omnipotent and omniscient Lord God created his son out of nothingness so that he may serve the Lord's purpose. As such, it is self-evident that the son is one of the father's creation. Learned through you, maybe. Surely you are not so brazen as to claim that you know Gon of Gisarche better than his original disciples, Saint Manuel and Saint Sandro. I am not but a humble preacher who spread the word of God in a quiet backwater island village. By our great Lord and Savior spake, spake that he is a God of all creation. At the same time, he affirmed that he is the one and only God. It is the same one and all-powerful God we all worship, is it not? The Gospel of Paolo Chapter 3, verse 16 spoke of Gon Jesarche. He came as the incarnation of the Holy Father in the flesh. <gasps> Therefore, it was clearly stated that the Gon of Jesarche is both one and the same as the Holy God and his Son at the same time. Are we to trust your word above this, that of Saint Paolo, one of the original six disciples? Disciples? Tell me, Apostle of Acerto. Acerto. Do you dare question the Holy Scriptures? It's simply unthinkable that an Apostle would deny the book. Is he claiming that the God of Jesarchi isn't even the Son of Good? I never thought I'd hear such a blasphemy on the side of the sea from those godless moors. Is this hearsay? Oh, this is quite a commotion taking place on, uh, down below, your majesty. Should I have the guards escort the culprit outside? Which the two of you are referring to? The girl or the apostle? The girl, of course, your majesty. <laughs> 
if anyone deserves to be dragged outside, is the apostle, apostle, not the courageous young lady. Who is she? I see she's not afraid to speak truth to power. Her name is Ariadne, father. What? She's my friend. <laughs> and one of the people I'm, I most admire in the world. <sighs> I keep telling y'all, I hate, I love this read, but I also hate this read because of all the big words. Gosh darn it. Tell me, Apostle of Acereto, do you dare question the Holy Scriptures? What does she think she's doing down there? That uh, impertinent bastard of a girl. I have to get this situation under control before it's too late. Huh? Here is the heretic and criminal priest Alejandro. By the sacred order of His Holiness, Pope Ludovico, Le Ludovico, Vico, Viso, we come to deliver justice onto the heretic. Huh? Huh? <gasps> oh, the the Inquisition. How did the Inqui Inquisitor arrive already? <gasps> the crucial that. I explained the situation before it spiraled out of control. Heretic Alejandro. The Tavero Council in the year of Lord 1122 established a definitive theological consensus through fair, unbiased debate. The Acereto school denies a unitarian nature of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. As such, the Holy See denounces the school as heretics who seek to defile the virtues of the scriptures. The chief apostate Alejandro has been charged with misleading and deceiving the good people of Etruscan. Apostate is a person who forsakes their religion. I hereby sentence you to excommunication. <sighs> Furthermore, Cardinal de Mer, Inquis uh, Inquisitor, please allow me to explain. Cardinal, you allowed a known heretic to deliver a sermon in the hallowed chapel. Huh. You will answer for your part in this blasphemy. No, I have been betrayed. This is the works of the Pope. I can't ever say this word, this name. D Ludoviso himself. Hold on, let me like look up that name. That's a weird name. Ludovico. 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 I gotta remember that. Ludovico. This is a work of the Pope Ludovico himself. It's an Italian name, guys. So yeah, I'm sorry for butchering that. <laughs> he must have hatched this plot to keep my influence in check for the moment. The Inquisitor is the representative of the Pope himself, meaning that his judgment is final and absolute. <laughs> I must explain the situation without provoking the Inquisitor as much as possible. Inquis Inquisitor, th there must be some kind of mistake. I, I, I was not the one who invited the Apostle, apostle of Sereto. Inquisitor, if I may, may I speak with you for a moment? I'm the Queen in this life, episode 12. The sermon by the Apostle, Apostle of Esereto and the arrival of the Inquisitors to punish the heretic. Both of these events happened in my previous life as well. However, what happens from now on? 
will be a gamble. Young lady, I have no idea who you are. What gives you the right to interfere in matters of the church? I am the second daughter of his eminence, the cardinal. My father's intent was not to aid the heretic Alejandro in his nefarious schemes. Out of his duty to fend against Alejandro's hearsay, my father prepared an arena in which the false priest would be refuted in public. Huh? What? Uh, hold, hold your tongue, child. Do you have any idea what you're saying? This is neither the time nor the place for your childish fool folly to refute him. By allowing a little girl to speak against him? Do you believe our work to be mere child's play? The fact of, of the matter is that you invited a heretic to speak. No, th that's not. And turned this entire mass into a mockery by be hiding behind your daughter. Cardinal de Mer and Miss de Mer. Are you mocking the sanctity of mass? He's much more hostile than I'd expected. However, if I back down now, that will mean the end of my plan and my life itself. His eminence only agreed to this mass out of def deference towards the Holy See. You see, the Apostle of Acerreto was a personal guest of His Holiness Pope Ludovico, who was sent to San Carlo on direct orders from the Holy See, for His Eminence to personally rebuke a guest of His Holiness, would have been a great affront to His Holiness' reputation. It's working. And another thing. My father was already aware of Alejandro's heretic leanings and had begun preparing a theological dissection of his false teachings. In fact, he already had a meticulous refutation in place for the public debate that was to take place today. Isn't that so, father? Uh, of course, well said, my child. In fact, I must question His Holiness' judgment in allowing the Apostle, Apostle of the Acereto to deliver his vile sermon in the Great Chapel in the first place. Father, I imagine even His Holiness was momentarily deceived by the wicked ways of the heretic. After all, the most evil of heretics often pretend to be the most holy of God's sh shepherds. Is she telling the truth? She's right. She even interrupted the heretic as he spoke. That young lady saved the soul of the San Carlo. If it hadn't been for her courage, it we might might have sat here listening to the heretic's lies until the Inquisitor has arrived. Her bravery is simply commendable. As to be expected of a cardinal's daughter, her knowledge is theology. Is outstanding. Theology. She must be following in her father's footstep. She's a hero of San Carlo. Uh, uh, I, I see. In that case, we shall adjourn for today. At last. I prove my, my own and my father's worth before the entire po populace of San Carlo. Not so fast. I demand that you're held accountable. What? And more importantly, this should preclude that the very pretext behind my betrothal. In this life, at least, I can be free of my betrothal to Cesare. <sighs> the King's Audience Chamber. <laughs> She is certainly a spirited young woman. I felt as though I was watching a well-written play. One written by the Pope and the young lady in unison. 
Well, they do say the truth is stranger than fiction at times, your majesty. I ought to reward, reward the devout young lady for her clear-headed retorts. Let me think. Huh. Perhaps a lady of her age might appreciate your uh, some jewelry, your majesty. Or a pretty dress. The heart of the deep blue sea. Huh? Pardon me, your majesty. The heart of the deep blue sea. A sapphire of the unique size and striking radiance. It is said that it was originally bought brought to the realm of a man by a pod of dolphins that left it on the beach and returned to the sea. True to its unparalleled beauty and fable origins. It is a priceless treasure coveted by collectors across the land. In particular, it was an object of ardent fixation for Countess Rubina, the mistress of King Leo III. What is His Majesty thinking by bestowing the jewel of such a young lady despite Countess Rubina's obsession with it? Your ma Majesty, surely that's a tad excessive for a gift of this nature. Rubina has been lusting after the stone with her heart's desire. <laughs> For granted to Cardinal, Cardinal de Mare's second daughter. It eventually returned to me once she marries into my household. But, but that would mean... Indeed, I will have her betrothed. To who? No. To my son, Cesare. Oh no. So she still can't escape her fate of marrying this sleazy, scummy person. Oh no. What's gonna happen? Oh, she's gonna lose her marbles. <sighs> All right, guys, I'm sorry. I know I will always apologize when I read this webtoon. I will butcher every Italian names and words and I have to pause so please be patient with me as I'm learning these words and adding it to my vocabulary. My back is killing me. I have to readjust a lot now but yep not enjoying this at all. My back is killing me. Not because of the read. Oh all right this I gotta read the next uh two episodes because this is getting really good. All right, guys, I if you guys enjoy the way I read this, feel free to subscribe, share, like, and comment, and I'll catch you guys next time. Bye!